this video I want to talk about keeping your whippet healthy. <laughs> what I want to talk about in this video is keeping your whippet healthy. This is Louis and if you haven't met him before he's our whippet. He's five years of old age. He was a rehome and he was with three other families before we got him and uh, he's turned into a beautiful beautiful dog. If you haven't seen any of our old videos, if you're new to our channel, check them out. There's lots of Louis on his walks and runs. He loves the beach and loves chasing his ball. But what I want to talk about today is keeping your whippet healthy. And we can talk about the simple things. I mean, you know, fresh water, plenty of exercise. So Louis gets, he's always got water around all the time. And he has um, two walks or three walks a day and at least one or two runs a day. So he gets plenty of exercise and if you've seen our other videos he's out all the time out and about but the main thing is around food how do you find the best food for your whippet and if you think about it the really sad thing is that whippets or dogs generally they die as teenagers whippets of a breed are quite healthy they have very few uh, inbred defects and uh, they're usually quite healthy dogs and they'll live to about 12, 14 years, maybe a bit longer if you're lucky. But trying to keep them healthy as long as you possibly can over that period of time is absolutely critical. It certainly is for us because we want to have an active life with one of our best friends here, Louis. So we've been through a very long process of trying to find out the best food for Louis. And we've, we've tried a different types of processed food and we've also tried some raw food as well. We talked about feeding whippets before and there's a lot of um, messages we got back about raw food and we tried that but uh, looking into it and looking into the research and proper proper veterinary research is that uh, it can be difficult to get a balanced diet using raw food i'll be getting all the minerals all the vitamins everything they need and then there's all the issues around bacteria and having that in the camper van and dealing with those raw foods and then around bones as well, uh, whippets having bones, if they have big bones, how, how do they actually um, digest them? Can they get stuck in the gut? Can they cause obstructions? Or can they damage the teeth and cut the gums and have problems around that? So we've moved away from raw food and we've looked at processed food. So you start to read the ingredients, don't you? So you, you go and buy your food, you wean your dog off your food for a period of time onto a new food, you'll see how they get on. The old question is, how's the poo? How's the poo doing as part of that? And then uh, are they farting all the time and are they healthy and are they enjoying the food? And what we found over the different types of food we've had for Louis is that some of them do cause him a runny bull. They do cause him to fart. And um, they eat some of the foods as well make him quite hyper, which is quite surprising. Um, but when you actually look at the ingredients uh, in a lot of the foods, there's, you can easily see that there's a lot of crap in there. So trying to find a food that's ethical, and what I mean by that is that there's some sort of process of identifying where those raw ingredients come from, and they come from a quality base, and finding a product that has a balanced diet in there as well. Although dogs are carnivores, they do need all the minerals and everything else that I can get from vegetables. Um, so we went for processed foods and we went for a long, long process. But when you look out there, there are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different types of food. So we feed Louis um, some wet food. So he has two lots of wet food a day, only a small proportion. And then he has dry biscuits as part of that. And he'll get his old treat of bits and pieces. And he'll test a tri uh, chip out now and again in a pub, but he's getting very choosy about them. The chips go from Louis getting very low. <laughs> he's not a, a fatty eater, but uh, he won't, if we put a lot of food out for him, he won't eat it all. He'll eat part of it and then he'll leave it as it goes on. And what we tend to find is we feed him in the morning some wet food, and then in an evening he'll get some wet food. And during the day there'll be some dry biscuits out good quality biscuits that he'll have throughout the day and he can eat them at any point he wants. And what he usually does is before he goes to bed, he'll run into the kitchen or go to them in the camper van and he'll eat a load of biscuits before he goes to bed. Or if we're going to go out somewhere, it's as if he's thinking, I'm, I'm going to be hungry out there. I better have something to eat before I go out. So he's got this bizarre routine. We call them last minute biscuits because he'll think, all oh, right, we're going somewhere. I better have something to eat. 
So he's not obsessive with food. Um, he can be quite picky. He's not a fan of fish, bizarrely. Um, he'll have some leftovers of fish and chips and stuff like that. But raw fish or fish processed in food, he's not a particular fan of that. I don't know why. So we've looked at various um, dog foods and products out there. And uh, we was going through a very long process. Um, and this come about... We've done it for some time, but it mainly come about because we had a problem with Louis. He cut one of his drew claws off and he had to have a small operation on that. And the operation, the the um, antibiotics and the anaesthetic upset him and he was really poorly. There's, there is a video about this on my channel. And he was poorly for some time and he had sickness and diarrhea and he couldn't eat anything for a few days. And we was really worried about him. We thought he was going to pass away. We fed him raw cooked egg, uh, sorry, scrambled egg and various bits and pieces to get him back on his feet. And then he started to eat and I'm pleased to say it's all back to normal. But that really made us think about finding the best food. So as I say, we was going through this process of testing different foods out, reading the labels, finding what the products were, are they ethical, do we know where it comes from? Does it say some meat products that come from somewhere like China, that there was no trace behind it? Or did it actually say that there was there was, there was was a process of backtracking to find the source of uh, where the base ingredients come from? And there's quite a few out there that do that. It's not unique to one product. And then you start to look at um, the mixtures of things in there. Have they got all the balanced diet? Have they got all the minerals? Have they got all the vitamins in there? And then the container, what type of container they come in and how best is that to store that? Are they in cans that are quite awkward? And how best can we store that within our camper van as well? So we was going through this and was constantly trying different bits and pieces. And to be fair, price wasn't really an issue to us. As I say, Louis is so precious to us. We just wanted to be as healthy as possible. And we wanted to have something that was enjoyable. So we kept going to the pet shops and we kept buying new foods and speaking to the vet and then trying something else and trying something else. And we didn't really get anywhere until bizarrely. It's funny how these things work out. We went to Camp Quirky last year. And uh, at Camp Quake, you have to pay a dog ticket and you have to pay a bond to make sure your dog's well behaved and you get that back if it doesn't cause any problems. But as part of that, you literally got a doggy bag. And within the doggy bag, there was some dog food from a company called Pooch and Mutt. And I've seen these in the pet shop and I didn't really take much notice of them. They're in a strange carton. Um, and we tried it at Camp Quake and it was great to store. The ingredients are good. And we managed to... Um, Louis had it straight away, he wasn't a problem, he enjoyed eating it. So we've gradually, um, probably over about 9 or 10 months now, he's been eating a combination of pooch and mutt dry biscuits and pooch and mutt wet food. Um, I'll show you what the carton's like and what the content is. These are the two main versions we get for him. So this is chicken, pumpkin and pea. And as you see, it's grain free and junk food free. So these are actually produced as a health food for dogs. And then the other one which he likes is turkey and duck. And again, grain free. But if you have a look at the ingredients on here, where are they on here? It's all ethically sourced. There's traceable to where the actual products come from. And it's a balanced diet. It's been specifically put together as a health food for dogs of all the different ingredients, minerals and vitamins that a dog needs. But the interesting thing for us as well is the cartons. These are, these are recyclable. They don't take up much room and they have a tear off top. You just open the can like so, and there's the processed food inside. And Louis literally will have about that much twice a day. And as you can see, within there, you can actually see the various ingredients, the vegetables, actually in the food. So Louis will have that, maybe a little bit more than that, but he'll have that in the morning after he's been for his run. And he'll have about the same amount on a night. And then through the day he'll have dry biscuits. So we keep this in the fridge, so once you've used it, you just close it down like so.
and that sits in the house fridge obviously no problem but it fits in the camper van fridge really well so here's our camper van fridge i'll stick a wall but look at that it fits perfectly in the bottom of the fridge now i'd like to say that was planned but i would imagine it's purely by fluke so they're really easy to store and um even when they're just in the packages, we can store them in the camper van for taking away with us. And we'll take half a dozen of those away with us and leave some in the camper van all the time. And these are the dry biscuits, or as we call them, last minute biscuits. And uh, these are, as I say, out all the time for Louis. But it's that old thing, isn't it? You are what you eat. So at least we know exactly what we're feeding Louis. We know there's a full balanced diet in there. We know it's a quality product. There's no junk coming from China or somewhere as part of this. It's a quality product that's been ethically sourced as part of that process. The cartoning is great for the camper van. It's easy to store and you can stack them up. They don't take a lot of room in the van. He likes it. He's doing well on it. His coat, his coat is good on it. His teeth are really good as well. And I think that's a lot to do with these dried biscuits. Not having too much wet food. And that was an issue with our last with it, um, Ben. Uh, we didn't get him while he was about four. We got Louis when he was one, but Ben was four and he already had some dental problems. And then later on in his life, he had to have a number of teeth taken out because there was rotten. So keeping your dog's teeth is another critical bit of keeping them healthy. So with quality dry food, quality wet food, and and we're okay with Louis, as I say, he's not greedy, he won't eat all this straight away. He'll gradually eat this as it goes along. Price-wise, I've just been out and bought some more of these. Um, these are £1.66 a carton, and you buy them in packs of a dozen. And the sell-by date on them is, is well in advance, 2022 for this particular packet. So you get plenty of life out of them. We buy the bigger bags of the dried food. Um, because see, it's better value of course so his dried biscuits these biscuits here come in one of these big bags here and there's a hell of a lot of information on there about proportionate sizes but again the same information and the same ethics about producing this is based upon the other foods as well so you can you can trade back you can trace back the ethics behind where the food's been sourced grain free and gm free all those type of ethical things that you would expect from a, qu a quality food so what i would be interested to know is um what other foods that you feed your dog what works for you do you use pooch and mutt and uh, if you have any comments i know i'll get loads of information back about having raw food but i think i've been through the reasons why we don't do raw food um, and I think the only other option is obviously processed foods and trying to find a good processed food that's ethically right. This is a 10 kilogram bag, 22 pound. Um, the, this bag cost, I think it was about, yeah it was, it was 49 pound for this bag. Um, I got that from Pets at Home, but you can buy them online, you can buy them direct from Pooch and Mutt as well. But we buy the big bag because... Um, it lasts so long you're not out shopping all the time so this will literally last months for us and we just uh, keep a proportion of it into the camper van and uh, we have the rest at home we put in plastic tubs to keep it fresh you enjoying that Lou? <laughs> and Lou's weight is constant is about 15 kilograms which is about right for a whippet and he's been that year after year when he goes for his yearly check at the vets so i hope you found that useful and interesting just to finish off, some of the ingredients you want to be staying away from for your dog food are the obvious ones. Junk meat. So where does the meat come from? Is it ethically sourced? Can you trace it back? Um, grains and fillers. What junk are they putting in there just to bulk it out? And you do get that with some of the uh, very cheap dog foods. The quality ones that are out there, you don't get that in there to be fair. Sugars because dogs can struggle from diabetes for having the wrong carbohydrates and the wrong sugars in there as well. So that's our view. That's where we've got with Louis. Uh, thanks to Camp Quirky, bizarrely, Camp Quirky directed us to the dog food that we're using, bizarrely. And to Pooch and Milk, great ethical company. Love the packaging, good quality food. Uh, there's money back guarantee. There's lots of dietary information on their website. 
and they're a new company so um we've been a new company they've they've actually had to compete with some of the big boys and they've uh, got a good stake stake in the market as well now so they're doing really well so as usual comments before what do you feed your dog i know i'll get lots of stuff about um raw meats and feeding raw food and making your own food for your dogs but i think i've covered that an, an interesting fact that i did discover as well is that lots of people who use the argument that dogs all come from wolves and if you think okay they did originally but that was quite some time back and uh, did you know that the average age for a wolf in the wild eating uh, wild food is about seven years of age we've moved on very much from that we know all about human dietary and uh, a lot of that's transposed across into the pet world and the animal world as well so we know we can give the best vitamins minerals and the best food because we are what we eat and the dogs and our pets are what we eat or what they eat and that quality in there hopefully will give them a the biggest chance to have a healthy lifestyle and be with you as long as possible. Hope you found it useful. Thanks again for watching and see you on the next one. I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I, I was always the one.